Hi everybody! In this uh, part of the basic lure making series, I'll take you through the basics of uh, casting lures in polyurethane uh, resin, making you able to l make lures like these ones. One thing that has really changed my lure making least the last few years is starting to cast uh, lures in polyurethane resin. Um, this has uh, many advantages and I'll just uh, try to mention a few of them here. Uh, first of all, of course, you will be able to much easier reproduce uh, the same lure. You will be able to reproduce it in an almost exact copy of the other ones. So you will have, have very little variation between the, the few lures. Also, the, the ease of making more lures will uh, give you the opportunity to play a lot more around on uh, on different patterns and colors on the lures so you can uh, test them under different conditions and see what works um, without that much of an effort also with the with the ease of making different uh, types of lures you can play around with the position of uh, of the weights inside the lures uh, to see what effects it has on the lures movement um, as you can see here you have uh, a different uh, cast of the same lure with, with different positions. I'll be able to take them right away, right after casting to, to a pond or a lake and uh, test them out and, and check the, the movement. With wooden lures you would have to give them some sort of warnings or something to, to preserve the wood. This you can just uh, go ahead, cast them and go directly to, to testing. Um, so that's an advantage as well. And of course in the end the plastic is, is uh, fairly hard and it will be able to, to take a, a lot more beating than, than many wooden um, uh, types. Um, of course, if you choose a very hard wood, you will have approximately the same, but then you would also have them to be very hard to, to carve and, and uh, thus making it even harder to get to the, to the, the same uh, starting point. Polyurethane resin normally comes in bottles like these ones. It's a liquid component in two parts that, as long as they're separated, will remain liquid. And as soon as you mix them up, they'll start a hardening process that lasts for a few minutes up to one hour, depending on the, the brand and the product you purchased. This one mixes one to one by weight, which will mean that you will be able to use a normal scale to weigh up the two parts uh, to get the, the correct ratio for the mixing. One thing that's nice to know about uh, this resin is that it is, uh, it is sinking at its uh, pure state, so you will need to add up some additives if you want it to be otherwise. There are a lot of the different uh, additives uh, to the resin you can use, but the most important one is to me the, the glass bubbles. Glass bubbles is a powder that is very light and when you mix it into the, the, the resin, it will make it floating. So you'll need that if you need floating baits, or at least if you want some type of buoyancy within the bait. Another part you can use uh, is uh, a powder that will actually make it sink faster, or make it heavier, or just being able to, to reduce the amount of resin needed for the, the lure you are using. Uh, this could be this one, which is some aluminum trihydroxide filler powder, they call it. Okay, apart from that, you can uh, use other powders. This is aluminum powder, and this uh, mixed into the resin, it will give the, the, the resin a uh, metal-like uh, shine. Just like this one, that is co copper powder, which will give it a copper-like uh, shine. Um, I haven't used those uh, very much as mostly I paint my lures, so I would just prefer the, 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 the resin to be white. But uh, of course it could be nice if you could uh, skip some, uh, some painting by just uh, having the, the resin the, the correct color from the start. Okay, but once again the most important part is the, the glass bottles. To cast your own lures in polyurethane resin, you'll need the, the following things. 
of course, first of all, the, the polyurethane itself, itself. Apart from that, as I told you, I always use uh, glass bubbles in mine, uh, mainly because most of my lures is floating, but um, it also has the advantage that by controlling uh, where I have buoyancy and where I have uh, the weight placed in the lure, I can, uh, can change the movement. So uh, I think that for most lures, even sinking ones, uh, glass bubbles will be a, a, a must. So I always use glass bubbles to some extent. Apart from that, you need to make yourself some molds. Uh, molds are made in silicone and uh, you can check one of my other movies in the basic uh, lure making uh, series uh, to see how this is done. Uh, this is a, a mold for my um, the jerk, uh, jerk bait and this one is not really a bait but is for my um, my fat little uh, cart key hanger, uh, but uh, well, it works just like a, a bait. So, two molds for that one. Apart from that, you'll need a, a scale. You could use a normal kitchen scale. Uh, I think uh, that this ends up uh, quite messy always, so I just uh, bought one for, for this purpose. I also will use uh, uh, some cups or other containers that will be able to use for the mixing. Um, I found that these uh, paper cups are very good, um, so I use those. To make sure that the polyurethane resin doesn't stick to the mold, I use some uh, mold release and in this case I just use uh, Vaseline, which I brush on with a, with a uh, brush here. But you could also use a spray, a silicone spray and stuff. Just uh, make sure that you test it before you actually mold some lures because some uh, some um, things uh, might react with the, with the polyurethane so you should uh, test it outside to make sure that, that the thing you are testing for uh, using for, for mold release uh, doesn't uh, re react with the, with the resin. And then of course always safety first. Uh, I don't know some 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 resins may not be harmful but at least the, the glass bubbles which is very uh, light flowing uh, will, will uh, easily gets into the air and get into your lungs so always use a mask if you're in doubt i i do um so to make sure that that uh, i'm healthy and able to make more movies well let's have a look at the casting process itself First of all, I'll start by um, preparing the, the two molds uh, for, for the casting. And to do that, I'll just uh, brush them over with, with the Vaseline. Removing any hair that falls off the, the brush here. Well, now the two uh, molds have been uh, lubricated and um, as this one doesn't have any internal parts, I can just uh, go ahead and assemble that one. This uh, other one has an internal wire and some weights. So I'll just uh, add that to the lure here and then put that one together. I use uh, some pieces of uh, wooden board here to uh, make sure and stabilize the, the mold like this. Just using some, uh, some rubber bands to hold it together. Uh, doesn't need to be too tight as it will just uh, deform the, the bait so uh, just enough to make sure that uh, the, the, the resin doesn't run out like that and the other one as well two pieces of board like that so now the two molds are ready, and I'm ready to uh, to weigh up the resin. Uh, from experience, I know exactly how much uh, these two ones uh, need, so I'll just be mixing uh, just enough uh, of the resin to make sure that I don't uh, have a lot of um, resin that I have to throw away, as uh, you won't be able to separate them again. So I'll just grab my two uh, cups here. I have a stirring pin here to use for the mixing. I have my weight and then I have the two parts of the resin and um, of course the glass bottles. Well for the next part I'll need to put on my mask so I'll leave the, the speaking to be added later. 
but uh, well, let's see how it uh, how it goes. Shake both parts well before pouring them into the cup. Pour the needed weight of part A into one cup and part B into another. Forgot my gloves. You should put them on before you start pouring. Now add the glass bubble to part A. I never use more than 10% of the total resin weight. With 10% glass bubbles, 25 grams of resin will carry around 5 grams of weight. Start out by stirring gently to avoid the glass bubbles gets airborne. Once all the glass bubbles are mixed into the liquid, you can mix it more intensively. Make sure to scrape the sides of the cup. When all lumps are mixed in, you can pour in part B. Now you have to mix it very thoroughly. Part A with the glass bubbles will be very light and thick, and part B will be thin and heavy. So the two parts easily end up in two layers in the cup. How long time you have for the mixing depends on the hardening time or pot time of the resin used. Once you are confident that it's completely mixed, you can pour it into the mold. I normally pour in a thin stream to avoid trapped air in the mold. Once the mold is full, you should try to vibrate the mold to make sure that any trapped bubbles float up to the funnel. You can also squeeze the mold a bit to help the bubbles pass up through the funnel. Now the casting process is finished and you should leave the mold for the resin to harden. The lure has now had uh, about an hour to, to harden and uh, I can feel from the funnel here that the, the plastic is quite hard. So it's uh, time to demold the lures and look, have a look at them. So I'll just remove the rubber bands. And there you go. That's quite a nice lure here. Um, the small parts here around here I can just break off with my fingers. Otherwise I'll just uh, clean it up with a, with a knife and some uh, sanding paper. Uh, before you start painting these, you'll have to make sure that uh, all the, the, the part, uh, the leftovers from, from the Vaseline is removed. So uh, be sure to, to wash them carefully in uh, dishwashing soap. And um, I usually give them uh, some fine sandpaper as well to give the, the, the paint a better surface to, to hang on to. But apart from that, well, these are ready to get painted and go fishing. Let's just uh, have a look at the other one as well. Well, that looks really good. some small parts here I can just break off with my fingers 
and the rest of them I'll just clean off with the with the knife. Well, the movie could have just ended here, uh, as the the, the casting process uh, was was finished. But I just thought I will show you how you could uh, paint the, the Lewis uh, using some of the techniques uh, from my other movies. So um, I made up some extra of the jerk. I washed them with dishwashing soap uh, and uh, sanded them over with some uh, fine sanding paper. Apart from that, I made some stencils using the, the thermoforming uh, techniques uh, I showed you in, in another movie. Um, and uh, I'll be using those for, for one of them, uh, which is the one I will be showing how to paint in this movie. Um, apart from that, I'll do a, a few uh, round gobies uh, using the, the same techniques as in the round goby pattern movie. Uh, well, just uh, hang in if you, if you want to see how they're done, and um, I'll see you afterwards. Well, I start out by priming and using some uh, normal white um, color here, giving them a few layers and uh, heat uh, setting it in between. Uh, it's mainly the, the bottom part I will uh, do the, the widening because uh, I need a, a back, uh, a, a darker back, and uh, that doesn't require the same amount of. Um, priming well with the Lewis primed I will now uh, paint the bottom half with a pearlized white color uh, as this uh, gives me a nice uh, belly shine on, on the Lewis um, so that is what I'll be doing now And that is probably a bit hard to see here on the movie, but um, trust me, when uh, you s see the finished result, it's quite visible, this uh, pearlized color. Really gives this nice shine on the lures. Well, with the belly fixed, I've turned the, the lures back upside down. And I've mixed up some brown color with some uh, golden color to give it a nice uh, metallic shine effect uh, and I'll give the, the back uh, a bit of this um, to, uh, to darken up um, the, the, the back I'll just take that away Well, now I loaded up the, the airbrush with some uh, pearlized copper paint and I'll uh, use some, some uh, masks I made from, from um, some scale masks I've made from some uh, uh, metal net. Uh, you can see this is uh, the, the piece and I'll just uh, cut out and I've bent it around the, the, one of the, the lures and uh, cut out um, to fit. So this is a nice uh, tight fitting way to, to uh, add uh, scales to your lure. You can just place it on and it uh, more or less uh, snaps right on to, to the lure. Okay, so I'll uh, use this and uh, make some scales. Okay, now I've uh, taken some of the brown color from before and darkened up uh, even further that with uh, with some uh, black color. 
And then I'll be using the, the new stencils here uh, to make this uh, strange looking pattern. I think it will be awesome looking once finished. So let's try to see how that works out. Well, the painting is uh, now finished and uh, I've uh, put on some eyes and I think the, the result is quite fine. Uh, this one is a new pattern for me, so it'll be exciting to see if this one will catch fish. I'm pretty sure it will. The other one, the round gobi, I've tested numerous of times and that one I'm sure will catch fish. Um, well, now all that remains is to give them a, a few layers of epoxy. This will be, uh, won't be in this movie. Um, well then, thanks for watching and uh, I hope you liked the movie. Please uh, remember to, to check out the other movies in my YouTube channel. Maybe even uh, subscribing and uh, of course also you could check out the, the Facebook page where uh, you can see what's going on at the Splish Splash Studios uh, daily. Well, thanks for watching and I hope you see me soon.